Hi, my tripod is dying. So I'm sorry that this video is kind of at a wonky angle, but here we go. My name is Zeleny and I am, um, well, two things, depending on where you're following me. I am at Marae Designs. If you are following my test knitting and project scrapbook Insta, and I am the owner of Swanky Mountain, a yarn and supply store in Gillette, Wyoming. I am here today to do a, a pattern review, pattern and yarn review for my most recent test knit. It was the La Pie Cardigan by Kristen Michelle. Um, I adored this pattern, so I cannot wait to tell you about it. For this pattern, I used Baroku's Vintage DK Yarn. This is a yarn that we don't currently carry in the store. We carry this brand, um, but you can order this yarn through us in a variety of colors. It is a acrylic wool nylon blend, and it, let's see, it's DK weight. It's machine washable. I can tell you from personal experience though, if you do not machine wash it very, very carefully, it will felt big time. And under no circumstances should it go into the dryer. My children will tell you so. However, it does knit up beautifully. It is super soft and cozy, incredibly warm. Um, just a fabulous yarn. I love it. So, here is the cardigan. Now, as of the making of this video, this cardigan had not been released as a pattern yet, but hopefully she'll have it out soon because it'll be a great knit for this fall. This pattern includes some really cool features. It's 15 pages long, the pattern itself. She includes some fantastic schematics and she also includes information about um, different color options and tips and tricks for how to create shaping within your garment, um, which I love. So here is a section of it, the back and the front. This pattern is knit from the top down. I used roughly four different needle sizes of this. All Addies, because you know I'm a big Addy fan if you watched any of my videos. I used the Rocket Square 2.75 to start the collar at the top where this begins. And then I switched to some lace clicks, uh, size four to work the body. She used a backwards yarn over to create this really beautiful design within the raglan increases, which I loved. And I knit all the way down to the body through here and then began the color work. How she has you cast on the stitches underneath the sleeve, I also really liked. It created, um, when I went to do the sleeves, it created a great transition and barely any holes for me to seam together when I sewed in my ends. So color work. You can see here, um, my gauge shifts when I do color work and this sweater was not steaked. It is knit back and forth. That is one thing I would consider doing differently if I were to knit this pattern again would be to add the extra stitches in the middle, stitch it in the round and steak it. But in this particular um, case, it works either way. So um, back and forth, knits and purls. I honestly ripped this out and redid this section three times. Um, to get my gauge where I needed it to be and to get the fit where I wanted it to be. So here's my like little tip moment. If you are doing a project and it doesn't fit, especially in a garment, embrace the frog, rip it out, and get it where you want it to go. And this is also how I went about using multiple needle sizes. So I bumped immediately to a five to work through this section in here and it created a great shape. You can even see it tapered the body a little bit and it hugs my waist. When I got to this point and I tried it on, I realized that I would have to do something to address the fact that I am curvy um, and needed some extra width through here. 
So I went up two needle sizes to a seven and proceeded to knit the remainder of this color work. Now, if you look really closely, you can, I mean, I think you can barely tell that there's a difference in the gauges, um, but there is just a minute difference there. Um, I uh, Then for the ribbing, she did call for a smaller needle gauge. However, since I had increased so much from my initial four, I thought that it would look funny if my ribbing at the bottom and it would have just pulled it, which I did not want to happen. So for my ribbing on the bottom, I did use a five again, and I used Jenny stretchy bind off to create a nice stretchy bind off for the ribbing on the bottom. Then I cast on the sleeves. Her pattern has the sleeves fairly loose, kind of more like this sweater here. And while um, I do love this cardigan just for day-to-day -day wear, um, for this sweater, I also wanted to be able to use it for when I'm teaching or dance or when I'm layering and in circumstances where I would need a more fitted sleeve. So after knitting quite a ways, I ripped it back and I did additional increases at a little bit more frequent rate down the sleeve. And what I did was I marked those decreases with uh, stitch markers. And then when I did the second sleeve, because I'm infamous for not getting my sleeves to match, I started with a new stitch marker. And then as I got to each decrease, I removed from the first sleeve to the second sleeve to kind of help me keep track of where I was. Worked like a charm. I probably will make a video about it at some point. Ribbing again, I did with the 2.75 millimeter O and I did use a size five. So even though I started the yoke with a four, I knew once I got to knitting in the round that my gauge was going to tighten up a smidge. So I went ahead and bumped to a five to help to maintain that flow. And so I didn't have that cut. A lot of times, um, and I'm guilty of doing this, when a knitter transitions from the yoke and puts those stitches onto a needle and starts casting on the sleeve, there's a definitive um, like kind of placement here where things shift and you can see it. Um, to avoid that, I opted to go up a needle size. Yes. All right. So sleeves were done. Um, for the cast off, for the cuffs, I did a knit two through the back loop. So you can see it's not super stretchy. My cuffs are still stretchy, but this section isn't stretchy, not like the bottom. Big difference. Um, this I did intentionally because I as you can see, I like to push my sleeves up and I want them to stay put. This cardigan does not stay put. You can even see this one's already sliding back down. Big pet peeve of mine. This gives me enough stretch that I can get them comfortably on. And if I push my sleeve up, it's gonna hold it and keep it in place, which I love. Then I added the button bands. Now I will admit I was super excited. Couldn't wait to start wearing this sweater but I knew in order for it to look like a finished garment, I needed the button bands. I rarely close a cardigan. So I did not, um, as of this time, I do not intend to add buttons to this, but I did want the option. So I went ahead and added the button holes in the button band. So I would have the option to add buttons if I so chose. I did go back to the 2.75 needles for the button band. And as you can see, it, it pulled the garment. In hindsight, I should have maybe gone to a three or four to knit the button band in order, do, in order to um, allow this to lay flatter. Again, was super excited about getting this finished, have zero intention, right now to actually close it. So I wet blocked, wet blocked and aggressively pinned this section in order to stretch this portion out so it wouldn't curve quite so badly. Um, for the most part, I don't think you can tell unless you're being like a garment, um, what's like a garment police person. But since I'm not around any of those at the moment, 
don't have to worry about it. However, I'm sure my mother and grandmother might be rolling over in their respective graves, but it'll be fine. <laughs> so there you have it. A lovely made sweater. If I ever do decide to go back and add the buttons, I might, I do have plenty of this color yarn left over. I might go back and rip this out and knit it with the larger gauge. But for now that I can wear it, not gonna be for a hot minute. There you have it. I do really love it. I would totally test knit for this designer again. She was super communicative and very helpful with tips uh, for those of us that were testing that were newer to color work and like I had never color done color work pearl wise. Um, so she had some great tips. She's got great YouTube tutorials in the pattern which I always appreciate. As you can see, I'm a visual person. And uh, the chart was super nice to read, just super nice. So there you have it. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or questions about the pattern, the yarn, or the needles, please feel free to comment below. And if you haven't watched my other pattern review email, pattern review videos, I invite you to do so there on my channel. Have a great day.